class is the distance section of this class and, uh, and as you can see here we have two other sections of this class that I'm offering this semester and uh, and and you know they're available on campus on Tuesdays and Thursdays now I know a bunch of you are not on campus and so this is not an option for you but for those of you who are around I certainly don't mind if you stop by and attend class in person either all the way through the semester or just periodically or, you know, whatever it is. Um, you know, anyway, that, that's fine. And, uh, and you know, that usually have lots of seats in the classroom, and that's the only thing that, that you know, controls how many people can come. So uh, even though this is the distance, is it's online version, you're welcome to come by class if you like. So uh, office hours, uh, you'll have my office hours on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 2.30 to 2, and we can do that by Zoom, we can do that by phone, we can do it in person, you know, whatever you want to do, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, the way the course is going to work is that every Monday I will post to YouTube uh, short recordings of information about, you know, we got 200 in-person classes and, uh, and those for an hour and 15 minutes uh, twice a week. So that's two and a half hours worth of material is that what I'm going to put into the recordings that I post to YouTube. No, mostly because there's a difference between the YouTube version of this class and the in-person version, version of this class. And it's that, you know, in the in-person uh, part of the class, I get feedback from people in class, and we talk about things, and we discuss things, and people, you know, uh, bring up issues and problems and all that kind of stuff. That's a lot harder for us to do in, in an online class. So I think the section, the recordings will be shorter, probably much shorter, and yet will cover most of the material. So there you go. Now, I'll try and post those recordings every Monday afternoon. You know, I'll probably be making a Monday morning. And then I have a class with our Kosovo, with Kosovo-based students that goes from 12.30 till, you know, 1.30 or something like that. And uh, and so I'll be working uh, doing that, and that's Monday, Wednesday. And so I'll be working most of the days on Mondays and, and Wednesdays. Uh, but I'll try and get your recordings together Monday mornings, and then I'll have to render them and post them to my courses and stuff. And I'll I'll send an email out most of the time that, that you know, I've posted the new recording. So it'll work all right. It'll be just fine. Everything's going to be coordinated through my courses because that's just a lot easier for us. And, uh, and, and, and that's it for that. Now, we've got a textbook that I've assigned for this class, and it's this one. And, you know, not too thick. Uh, but it's good in that it tells you a lot of stuff that you know, perhaps your mother should have told you about how to do uh, charts and graphs and stuff. But I think it's useful. My experience working with students has been that those who know these basic ideas about color and content and what kinds of graphs and how to organize pages and how to have enough white space but not too much white space, you know, that matters. <laughs> and that's what this book really talks to you about. <laughs> There's another book out there that's really good along these same lines. And, and this one uh, is a comparative thing. It looks at all different kinds of, 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 of dashboards and it critiques them. And you know, that's just wonderful because the, the 
critiquing the moment to the dashboards. We have so helpful stuff, information about that, but it's not the, the big book of dashboards. You know, great. And then the other uh, resource that we'll use is a classic past text by, by, uh, by uh, Tufty, and that one's posted to, uh, a PDF of that one is posted to my courses. So we'll have reading assignments every week out of the Nussbaumer book, uh, but the others are out there uh, for you to use if you so desire. They'll be optional, but I think you'll find them useful. So course assignments, how's this thing going to work? Well, we're going to have four team-based labs. Now, the teams uh, will be formed by yourselves. Uh, <coughs> and, uh, and I'm going to say that I'm going to put a maximum team size of up to three people, just because if you get much bigger than that, it gets really hard to coordinate your activities. I don't think these assignments are going to be that hard, that you need tons of people on them. Um, and the other thing is that we're going to use Azure DevOps for this. And, and as an RIT student, you get a free license to Azure DevOps. But the maximum group size in, in, with your licensing is five. So, you know, we can't get much bigger than three. I think three is a good size. There we go. So we're going to have four team labs in this course. We're going to start out with a semester plan. So I'm a big planning guy, and, and I, I really like Azure DevOps because it allows groups to coordinate their activities. And, you know, you guys are distant, so you may not have uh, time to, to talk to each other that, that works across everybody's schedules and everything. Azure DevOps will allow you to, to communicate uh, like professionals uh, using a real tool in a way that will make sense to you. So the first assignment is putting together the semester plan. We'll talk more about what goes into that semester plan, but really it's about how to get yourself organized for the whole semester, not just lab by lab by lab. So, you know, it's going to be things like who's in your group? Uh, what kind of uh, schedules do you both all have? How can you coordinate your activities together? Who's got expertise in what field? You know, those kind of basic co cohesion, coordination kind of things will be part of this first assignment. Now, the next three assignments are all straight ahead, dashboard, visual analytics assignments. So the first one is going to be an e-commerce or, or enterprise resource planning uh, assignment. Uh, the reason I put this one in here is because this is most probably where a lot of you are going to end up working in e-commerce and ERP stuff. Why? Etc. And, uh, and analytics in this field is just really important. Uh, and and uh, the language and uh, the information that people in e-commerce are interested in is different than people in, in other fields of analytics. The next one is kind of a fun one. There's a, uh, a public data set uh, on the uh, Chicago crime data. There's also one on Austin, uh, Texas crime data. And, uh, and it's just kind of interesting and fun. But the reason I chose this one is that it's got a completely different domain knowledge behind it that you're going to have to figure out. You're going to have to know about how Chicago organizes itself as a city. You know, it's got boroughs, it's got uh, uh, geographic locations, it's got all kinds of stuff that are that relate only to uh, 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 a city like Chicago. Well, that's another interesting project to work on. Now, the last one is going to be a health or ecology project. Now, the thing about the health related projects is that you know there's a ton of COVID data out there that will be really interesting for you to look at and it's free in in, uh, in BigQuery uh, but I think you'll enjoy this one and we'll think about different ways to organize it and and the net result of uh, each one of these labs is that you as a team are going to outline things like what's the data source that you're going to use what's the outcome that you're going to strive to create and what are the questions that you're going to be uh, trying to find answers to and then you're going to create dashboards and, and visual analytics to display this so that you can present a, a, uh, uh, a compelling argument for your case for the answer to the questions that you've outlined that's what these projects are going to be all about so all of the projects are going to start with an <coughs> Azure DevOps project summary and a plan. Project summary and, and plan is, is, you know, it's kind of like a proposal in, uh, in, in academic speak. 
Uh, but that's how we actually got ops organized this thing. So, you know, with that, we do it. The people that have access to the, our, our data sets and everything, our public query, the data and the data sets that are out there, and so on and so forth. So, those are going to be the, the kind of group or team that is working on those things through to the beginning of March. Go to the next slide. Okay. Yeah, the, and then the last thing that you're going to have for this class is a final team project. Now, the topic for your team project, that's up to you. So, what I want you to do is two things. One is to think about what's your capstone project going to be? Where do you want to develop the domain knowledge and that will probably lead to, you know, work in your field or advanced uh, career plans or whatever they are? What's what's your team pro what your team project should do is to get you started to developing the domain knowledge and the knowledge of the technology and everything to do a good job on your capstone project. So that's what I'm gonna, you know, that's what we'll do. You'll negotiate as a team as to which project you want to work on. Hopefully you can find something that's interesting and compelling and, and you know, something that you want to find out about for your team project. So the project will start with an Azure DevOps project plan, just like everything else. On the 28th of March, on the 1st, I'll give you feedback on your uh, project plan. Uh, and then on the 9th, the 16th and 23rd, I'm going to uh, give you time to work on that project. Because if you don't have time to work on a project, what good is the project? So that's, I do this all the time with my classes and I find that it works really well. Uh, if I'm going to make your project a big part of your grade and a big part of the course, then I need to get, give you time to work on it. That's what this is too. It's what this <coughs> is about. Now, the, the end deliverable for your project will be a project presentation. And you can do that in YouTube. You can, you know, I want you to present your material, which means uh, some sort of a, a, a recording of a, of a presentation that you do with each of your group members working on this. Now, what tool you use for that, that's up to you. Uh, but, you know, it should be something where you can work together on this and, and, uh, and find a way to get everybody talking. Now, you can, can use the same team for your project as you do for the other assignments. But, Instead of four break in line, if somebody's not contributing to the group, to the, the, the uh, labs or the assignments that you've done previously, cut them out of your team for the final project because you know they're not contributing, they're not contributing. And uh, um, and, and so you are empowered to reshuffle your teams for the final project if you would like. And uh, and and that's entirely up to you. So everybody contribute to your teams and you won't have any problem with this. If you're slacking off and not helping out with the team projects, be careful. They may just cut you loose for the final team project. Then you're going to have to scramble to figure out, you know, how to do the project and everything else. So, you know, get yourself uh, going and, uh, and, and I hope it works for you. Uh, we also are going to have a final exam in this class. Uh, <coughs> no, sorry about the cough. Uh, final exam in the class, but it's going to be a take-home essay-based exam. And uh, I'll post it on the 26th of March, and it'll be due on the 30th. Now, you'll notice that that's way before the end of the semester. Well, what I do is I, I take my class and I break it up, and I say, well, the first part that's where I'm going to be lecturing. That's where I'm going to be presenting information to you. The second part is your project. And, you know, I'm not going to be lecturing. You're going to be working on your project together. So when I get to the end of my lectures, that's when I have my final exam. And so you'll have, you know, a few days, you know, we have four days on there to answer two questions out of six or eight essay questions. And uh, each one of those essays should be you know, probably three to five pages, just so you get a feel for what kind of work to expect to complete this final exam. Project ideas. Well, you can use, uh, you must use multiple data sources. So what you're gonna find in BigQuery is that you've got these public data sets that have lots of stuff in them. You know, huge wide tables are optimized for analytics. You know, they're not production data. They're not, uh, uh, they're straight ahead for analytics and not for transactional data. And so they're gonna be big and wide. And it's really easy to come write an SQL query that just goes out and picks the fields that you want and does a few groups and, you know, sorts out this, that, and the other thing. Then boom, you're done, right? Well, not really. 
What I want you to do is to find a way to correlate multiple data sources for your projects so that you may take the crime data from Chicago and correlate it to, you know, wealth information from another data set that relates to the neighborhoods where the crime happens. Is there more crime in poor neighborhoods or are there, is there more crime in, you know, richer neighborhoods? Something along those lines. So your project, your group project can be done in BigQuery Data Looker, no problem. Uh, it should be related to your final cap capstone. It should be interesting. And I'm open to discussion about topics, but I want you to be creative. You know, whenever you interview for a new job, there's always a question of, um, you know, during your graduate work, did you do any projects that were really interesting to you? And the people who ask that question, they want to know. They want to know something about you as a person. They want to know about how creative you are. They want to know about what's interesting to you. And, and so this project can be that thing that that gets you headed toward a good conversation in that all-important job interview about things that are interesting to you. So think about this, dig around, find data sets, look in you know, big queries, uh, uh, public data sets, look up at other places, you know, find data from from Kaggle, import it into BigQuery, combine those three through a bunch of SQL queries, and boom, you got some really interesting information that you can then push out to Data Looker. Data Looker will allow you to create the interesting dashboards that you know you can use as you can solve your project. So you know, that's kind of the workflow. And it's a good workflow. It's an interesting workflow. And, uh, and I'm looking for this will be interesting for you. Now, I'm not going to lecture lots about how to work BigQuery and Data Looker and Azure DevOps. No, that's not. That's up to you. Now, you've got tons of information about BigQuery. Here's my project page for, uh, for BigQuery. Okay, a couple of things to point out. Each project has a project name, and you, know, you can see the mine was machine generated, and you know, that's fine. But, um, but be sure that you have that. Uh, I, I can't imagine anyone, especially outside who doesn't have a Google account, but make sure that you sign up. You can see that this the URL here is console.cloud.google.com, and, uh, and you, know, you need to make sure all that stuff is working. That's you know, part of your assignment for this week is to make sure everything's working. Now, public data sets. You know, there's all kinds of data sets out there. This, you, you can see kind of a list here of, of, you know, just some of them. We've got Chicago crime. We've got Chicago taxi trips. We've got, you know, cloud storage dot, dot geo dot index. We've got all this information. Dig around. Look at, you know, look at this. This will tell you something about where you need to be to find these. Oh, and by the way, anytime it says sandbox, that means that it's free. Free is good. Um, I think you get, uh, is it three terabytes of queries per month, free in BigQuery? Well, you know, the way that, that Google optimizes your queries, they basically take these big wide tables, you know, tons and tons and tons of columns. And then it says, well, which ones, which columns do you want to include in your answer? And the first step that it does is to cut away all the columns that you have not selected to be part of your query. And when it does that, data sets of multiple gigs all of, all of a sudden come down to a couple hundred megabytes. Well, anytime you're working in the megabyte ranges, there's no way you're going to get to three terabytes. So, you know, it's all free. Now, you know, big companies, yeah, that's different. But for you and I, and for this class, I don't think you'll have any problem with the, uh, with the, the, the uh, uh, paying for uh, BigQuery. Uh, where it says upgrade over here, don't do it. Don't do it. That means go to the pay version. You don't want to pay for this. You want to be cheap and frugal, just like me. But how are you going to learn to work in BigQuery Data Looker Studio? Well, <coughs> as an IT student, you have absolutely free access to LinkedIn Learning. And so LinkedIn Learning has tons of great uh, you know, special purpose learning scenarios for you to work your way through. Here's one data analytics with BigQuery Data Looker Studio. Okay, oh, that's a good one. You know, tell a story with me. I love that. So you know, here's one. It's probably I don't know, it's two hours long, something like that. It's not very long. And yet, it's a really good. So figure it out. This is your job to, to you know, find out how to use this technology. Same thing with Azure DevOps. If you haven't worked with Azure DevOps before, get your account together, get figure out how to work with this. 
the URL gets you started is dev.azure.com, and then CBBICS, that's me. And so this is my account. And you can see, you know, I've got, I, I have most of my classes now use Azure DevOps because I really like the fact that it forces, forces, particularly my undergrads, to plan ahead. They don't want to plan ahead. It's just, you know, completely alien to them to think about planning. And yet, that's the key to getting stuff done. So, you know, forcing them <coughs> to use Azure DevOps forces them to plan ahead. So, uh, and, and that's what I want you guys to do, too. Now, the uh, project, one little hint, uh, project settings for Azure DevOps are important because what you want to do is to make sure that you're working in an agile process. So there's a bunch of different processes in there because this is an industry standard tool set and you know lots of companies work in lots of different ways. Uh, but I think agile will probably work the best for you. So you know think about you know, going into your project settings. First, you can see I've got a project, which is ISDE 430. That's a, another course I, I teach. And then I went to settings, and I went to overview. And down in here is my project settings and my overview. And then the process is what you're interested in. And this one is agile. The reason there's no drop-down box there, by the way, is that this project has already been started. So, you know, it would be really hard to say, well, I'm no longer agile, I'm something else. And so that's why it doesn't say anything there. Come on, we'll talk. Okay, so learning to work with Azure DevOps. Well, here we are back at LinkedIn Learning again. And this was another course It's called Azure DevOps for Beginners. Hello, this is great. And, you know, once again, it's, you know, a couple hours, something like that. And, uh, and you've got lots of time beginning of the semester to work on things like this and to get yourself ready. So project summary, you know, how are we going to do this? Well, you know, I try and be very industry-like in my, my courses. But for this one, I'm going to have you I use more of an academic uh, um, layout. And we'll talk more about this again. But I just wanted to show you something about what might go into a project summary. And, and this is you know, very much like the, uh, like the, the capstone. Uh, proposals that you're going to be writing. And, and frankly, I would encourage you to use Azure DevOps for your capstone uh, because it, it just works really well. Now, you just kind of lay out your project and we'll talk about that again. You have a 20 minute presentation. That's not a big deal. And, uh, and then, so I wanted to sum this up with a you know, kind of overview of what I see about this course. Data visualization, what does that actually mean? Well, for me, that means actually communicating with data, not just putting data in front of people, but actually communicating with data. And that's very different than just how to use bar charts. And so, you know, and when you're communicating with data, you've got to know some backgrounds about that, about what you, what the goal of your communication is. And, and in this case, we've got the requirements for communicating with data. You know, first off, you've got to have a domain knowledge. You've got to know what you're talking about. Uh, um, you know, if you're talking about e-commerce, you know, what's a path, what's a, uh, a funnel? Uh, for a new customer funnel. So, you know, those kind of things matter. So you're going to be learning a lot about different domains this semester. When we talk about Chicago crime, you're going to have to know about crime statistics. You have to know about how the city of Chicago is organized. You're going to have to know about what are these different police codes and jargon. What does that all mean? Because if you don't know that, you can't communicate with data. You've got to have a well understood question. You're not just poking around in the data. There's no point in that. As a matter of fact, statistically, it's a really bad thing to do. Just look for correlations in data. No, you need to have a question in mind before you start hammering away on the data. You've got to have access to the data. And that's going to be one of the things that you do as part of your project plan at the beginning of every new new lab that we're working on. You've got to figure out what data am I going to use to answer this question. Now, the way the, the new projects, and remember we've got you know, four of them there, is that, is that the first thing you're going to do is to fill out that Azure DevOps project summary 
And one of the things you're going to have to put in there is what data are we going to use to answer this question? Now, the next thing you're going to have to have is that, you know, people don't work as individuals in computing much anymore. In a, in a lot of cases, it's a, it's a security thing uh, because, you know, one person doing things by themselves can get themselves in trouble. But if you make them part of a group, then that group is never going to resist getting into trouble and, and doing bad things. So working as part of the group is, is the way you're going to spend your whole career. So you're going to have to have a plan for your group. Uh, you're going to have to have an understanding of the different charts that are out there and what they work best for. Some charts work great for one thing, but lousy for others. You know, what about categorical data versus continuous data? Which charts work better for categorical than continuous? That's what we're going to talk about, too. And the last one, the last one, that access to the technology. Now, <coughs> in this case, we're going to use a big variety of data studio. But, you know, someplace else you may use something else. That's fine. But you, I, the thing that I want you to notice out of this list is that, you know, where does the technology part come in? Well, it kind of comes in last. Because if you don't have these other things, if you don't know the domain that you're working in, if you don't have a question that you're really comfortable with, if you don't have data to support what you want to do, if you don't have a plan to get to work to, to get your work done, and if you don't know what the different charts are and when they work best, being a wizard in, in BigQuery is going to get you nowhere because that's not the hard part. The great thing about the new set of tools that we have out there available to you is that they're easy to work with. So what that means is that we've abstracted away this whole huge question of, you know, it's so hard to do technology. Well, you know, in a lot of ways it's not. What it's hard to do is to know what things make sense and how to communicate that data so that the questions that you ask the answers that you get have real impact in the world and aren't just pre charts Okay? All right. Well, uh, have a good week, everybody. I'm going to post these just once a week. And, uh, and you know, this will probably take me two days to get through a class. So, I don't know. But, you know, have a good week. And I'll post again on Monday. You're always welcome to email me if you have any questions or, or concerns or anything. Uh, take care, everybody. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.